It's Q and A. Just kidding. What's up, guys? It's Adrian Boysell, and today we're gonna do something totally fun and totally different. It's the graphic design hot seat. Ian's got questions, and I got answers. As a pro, I wanted to be able to lend some of my experience and some of my expertise to Ian's questions. He's gonna throw them at me and I'm gonna answer them as accurately and as quickly as possible. So this is for entertainment purposes. This is for you to gain some knowledge. So I hope that you got your notebook, your pen and paper, and let's go. I personally think it depends on the time period of when you're in. For me, when I started my career, it was printing. Printing was huge, it's still huge. But now, as things are evolving online, the NFT space is a no-brainer. Companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Instagram, they're all picking up NFTs. They're gonna become more and more of a part of our daily life. And if you can get in now and get ahead of the curve, you have a great opportunity to establish yourself as an NFT designer. And that's going to be huge. And that's something that Ian and I are doing right now. Uh, I think the best way to find clients is to educate the market. So whether you're doing YouTube, you're doing Instagram carousels, you're doing Facebook and you're in, in Facebook groups, actually adding value into the world and giving to people and sharing your knowledge, your expertise is one really good way. And then another way I would give you is asking for referrals from your existing clients. This has been a game changing way that I've done it. And then really the last way is just to go out there and go to events and make make new friends, meet new people, and just go out there and network. Those are the top three things that I would say. Oh, that's easy, that's a numbers game. Take $100,000, divide it by the type of work that you're gonna do. So if you're gonna do logo design, which is gonna be on the higher end of the pricing table, you're gonna be at $1,000, $2,500. You just need to divide that $2,500 or that $1,000 by $100,000 get that number, that'll tell you how many people per week, how many people per day, how many phone calls you need to make. When I first started my career as a graphic designer, I started doing printing. I knew that I needed to call 50 people a day. Out of those 50 people per day, I was gonna get about five that were gonna do a business card and, and, and business card design and printing with me. That was gonna be about a $100, $150, bill, not including any other upsells. If I just sold five of those a day, that was gonna be my six figures and I actually beat that within six months. I love this question. When should you use Photoshop and when should you use Illustrator? If you understand the principles of how they were created and why they were created, this will give you context and make it very easy to decide when to use them. Uh, Illustrator is paths. So anything vector, which basically is, is another word for paths, has anchor points. If you're gonna do signage, anything large scale, anything that's gonna be printed, I highly suggest that you do it in a vector format. Vector is paths and Photoshop is pixels. Imagine yourself painting with pixels. With Illustrator, you're more of cutting and carving and creating shapes, and those shapes form a vector path, and those paths create an overall illustration. So you can have shapes on top of shapes on top of shapes with shades and gradients and things like that. But over on the Photoshop side, you're gonna be painting. So you guys probably saw the video I did a few weeks ago, the tutorial, The Lady Under the Ocean. You can blend layers, and it's really painting with photographs. So you can take images, photographs, illustrations, artwork, and you can blend things together, you can cut things away, and they're pixelated. If you scale that up, now you can do it on a larger scale canvas, but at a certain point when you try to scale that up, it's going to become pixelated. There are dots per inch, where vector is paths. So there's no dots per inch, there's only paths. You have an anchor point here, an anchor point here, one here and one here, and that would make a rectangle, right? There's only four anchor points to make a rectangle. If you have a circle, you may have an anchor point at the top, an anchor point over here, an anchor point here, and you're gonna bend those curves to make it. So that's the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator is one is painting and one more one is more like cardboard cutouts. It's more of like scrapbooking. That's the way I would describe the two softwares and how they're different. So if you're gonna use something you need to be large scaled, definitely go with Illustrator. But if you wanna paint something very photorealistic, go with Photoshop. All right, so that's the hot seat. Ian had some questions. I Hopefully I got some great answers for you. If you love this and you want me to do more stuff like this, Go ahead and drop a comment down below and say more. I wanna hear from you guys and make sure you join the Instagraphics Pro Network. It's a Facebook community that we are growing. We have our own private community as well off of Facebook. So check out the link below in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell and as always, keep looking up.